Proteins are the basic units that form life. They exist in muscle, hair, blood, and every part of our body. The gene sequence directs the order of how amino acids are arranged. Proteins with different functions are created to carry out all kinds of diseases in the creature's body. With the research on protein structure, scientists hope to find out the roles and functions of these proteins inside all creatures and our bodies. But the answer to the question isn't as simple as might be thought. 那在我们身体里面有大概三万多种不同的菌，那它的基因呢？这些基因可以表现出超过两万五千种不同的蛋白质，有功能性的蛋白质。那蛋白质它本这些蛋白质可能不只有一个或两个的功能，它可能有两个、超过两个、三个以上的功能。那这些蛋白质呢，是由超过几千个、几万个原子所组成。那这些原子组成的这么大的分子呢，就造成我们在研究蛋白质的一个困难度跟复杂性。In order to understand the complex protein structure, scientists must start by cultivating the bacteria to obtain a large number of proteins. After undergoing repeated purification and then chromatography, the high purity target protein is abstracted for crystal growth in order to produce the needed experimental protein crystal. This stage alone can consume three to five years of time, or even longer. 在呃困难性来讲，蛋白质第一个在准备上就很困难，因为第一个你要从呃身体里面去把蛋白质取出来，那可以在一个很稳定的一个一个软中溶液里面去做呃稳定的一个储存，那才从软中软中溶液上面再去加入一些沉淀剂，让它蛋白质能够去长出晶体，它的复杂性更困难，所以常常在养长晶体的时候，可能运气好的话，可能几天就可以养得出来，运气不好。你可能都长不出很好的条件，所以这些呃造成呃一些长晶的这些条件的一些不可预测性。After these uncertainties are overcome and suitable protein crystals have been grown, they are sent through an X-ray machine to undergo X-ray diffraction. When there was no synchrotron light source, it would take well over half a month to obtain the best data. 以前我们在做实验的时候，那常常有晶体，那我们上这个这个、实验室的 X 光机的时候，那通常说一组数数据大概要大概几天到一个礼拜的时间。This time-consuming process changed dramatically after the synchrotron protein structure identification facility was built. This facility took 300 million new Taiwan dollars and three and a half years to build. It can identify 500 brand new protein structures a year, ten times more than ordinary X-ray machines. The starting point for Taiwan's development of a synchrotron was the year 1981. In 1981, with support from the U.S.-based scientist Da Bang Pu and then-president of Academia Sinica, Si Liang Qian, they held a fellow forum in New York where discussion was about building a synchrotron accelerator in Taiwan. From the beginning, no one thought of such a big problem, so we didn't do a scientific study. So we can say that this is the first time in science to do a scientific study. Former Tsinghua University physics professor Yuan Zhongliu was the convener of the feasibility assessment team for the NSRRC. 一个做很大一个研究的一个团一个仪器的话，它的是不是台湾是不是可以做，是不是值得做？如果做的话，怎么做？这些问题是很很多很大的问题。呃，就十个月的时间，我们做成了一个可行性。In July 1983, the feasibility report for a Taiwan light source facility was approved by the government, and NSRRC officially entered the planning stage. So we made the first one. The world is not too big. About the size of the world, we are the second. We are the first. That is also more than two or three weeks. 
。所以当时我们做出来的时候，第三代加速器来讲，是亚琼亚洲第一个。我们科学各自做各自的事，但是呢，到了某一个阶段，应该要学会一些，就是体系的建立跟大的运作。东部社那时候被觉得是最好的，因为它是一个光源。为了产生这个光，加速器的人做高能物理的人，可以参与，也可以学加速器的建造方法。出来的光可以做各种各样，从原子、与分子科学、生命科学，或者是高能物理，不是高能物理，是能量比较高的，像 X 光、分子结构的决定，都可以来应用。所以觉得大家觉得这是好的。Due to the multiple applications of the synchrotron light source, many visionary scientists worked actively to establish the synchrotron research center. Just like the stars in the night sky standing watch over the Earth, the NSRRC, hailed as Taiwan's glory, was built to serve Taiwan's scientific community and cast a dazzling ray of light upon the world.